everybody. My name is Tony Lucky 33 Ferguson. I'm from Southern California Catfish Association. I'm doing a little presentation today on hooks. I got a few questions about different hooks and I'm gonna go over that with you today. It's gonna be kind of short. Hopefully we can make this under uh, four or five minutes. So here we go. The first hook right here is a treble hook. This is good for catfish. This is one of the ones that I don't use. This one is actually a treble hook made for dough bait. Uh, I don't really use treble hooks that much um, because they're usually hard to get out of the fish. A lot of the times the fish will stomach them or even if they get them in their mouth it's still very hard to get this type of hook out of the catfish's mouth. So this is a treble hook. This is one of the hooks that plenty of people use back east and in the Midwest uh, and I've actually seen people here use them for dough bait so treble hook you can get those in a different variation of sizes just like in all hooks uh, so you know according to this what I'm going to tell you today all of these hooks you can get them in different sizes depending on what size bait you're using the next hook is a true turn hook this hook has like a little cam system on it and a lot of people in the Midwest and here in California use this hook too also to catch fish. You can go up in sizes depending on your bait. Um, I've used these hooks before for catfish. Uh, you just have to use a little smaller bait and I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't use this but this is this is also a good hook for catfish and uh, my problem is the gap, the distance between the point and the back part of the shank. Uh, you really don't get a big gap on these hooks. So this is a true turn. The next one is a Gamamatsu inline circle hook. This hook is a good hook. It's a great hook. Uh, I've used it before. Good for fishing for big blues, channel cats. Um, this is a 7 knot right here. I'm going to show you a little bit about this one in a minute while I stop using this one. And it goes right back to the gap again. So if you look at from where the point to the shank is, the gap is a little bit narrower than the hook that I prefer to use. Gamamatsu makes a really sharp point uh, and a good sturdy hook. So this again is the inline circle made by Gamamatsu. The next hook you hear a lot about is the J hook. The J hook you can get in a variation of sizes. This is one of the smaller ones. I think this is probably about a six or a seven knot. Uh, most of the guys will use these that use these going after the big blues using the chunks that we like to use usually use a uh, eight to a ten. So this is one of the smaller ones. If you were going to use small chunks this is what you would use and a lot of times they free line their spools to catch their fish with these. Uh, perfect hook, great hook. I have nothing bad to say about this hook. Uh, so this is one of the hooks that you can use. Now again, I've told you guys before on some of my tapes that I am from Tulsa, Oklahoma and I fished a lot of lakes back home. This was our hook of choice. This is called the kale hook. This was made before the circle hook. This was the circle hook of its time. Uh, you can actually set this hook. It's, it's different than a circle hook to where a circle hook you let it basically let the fish set itself to where on a kale hook you pretty much set the hook yourself. Then again we go back to the gap. You can get a fairly large piece of bait on that and still have your hook exposed. So this is one of my favorite hooks and I still use this one. We're going to get into a, a further documentary on hooks talking about the offset you can look down this hook you can kind of see how the point is off to the shank I'm going to explain that in another documentary video of why that is that will explain to you why I like to use this hook uh, these hooks are also great for the river this is one of the primary hooks that we use for uh, flatheads uh, this is a 7 knot right here I predominantly use this one for the goldfish and the one that you see next to it is a 10 knot and uh, these are made by Eagle Claws. The 10 knots I use for my bigger panfish that I may catch, tilapia or bluegill. Last but not least, 
my favorite look that I use all of the time, me and my partner, Steve Catfish J. Johnson, uh, one of the premier fishers at Clear Lake, uh, we use the Daiichi Blood Red Circle Hook. We miss very few fish on this. At the end of the presentation, you'll see all of the fish that he's caught with this one, and some of the ones that I've caught too this year with this hook. The reason why we prefer this hook is, if you remember the Gawamatsu circle hook that I showed you, the cir that was an inline. This one's not an inline. The inline, you can tell by the, the shank back here. Let me show you the other one. The other one is a little bit bent. That's the difference. But if you notice the gap distance and the hook size, these are both exactly seven outs. But the Daiichi Blood Red is a lot bigger. You get a bigger gap and you can use a bigger piece of bait with that. So again, I hope you guys like this. That's my presentation on hooks. I'm going to show you next how we throw out and let the circle hook work for itself. So I'm going to cut the camera here. I'm going to turn around. I have a couple poles set up. We're going to show you how we set it up. All right. Thank you. All right. We're back. I have two rods set up on the back of my boat. I'm going to show you my little lure right here. Is imitating the big chunk of mackerel that we would use out at the river. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I cast this out and I set my line uh, to wait for one of the catfish using a Daiichi circle hook. So what I usually do is, I'm standing up right now, I usually cast my bait out not that far wherever I'm throwing my bait to. Hope you guys can see it. I wait for a few seconds, I kind of feed line out, once the line stops feeding out, which takes, you know, any, depending on the depth of water that you're in, you know, 30, 40 seconds, once my bait hits the bottom, I lock my drag, I reel in, so I can feel me pulling the bait and the bait drag in the bottom. At that point, your line at the tip of your rod is usually kind of tight. At that point, I free spool, I let out some line, probably two or three pulls, until my line is limp and kind of laying on the water. I lock my reel back in the engage position and put my rod in my rod holder. Now what you're doing is you're giving that fish a little slack to run. Uh, I would say maybe two or three feet. Once he picks up the bait, he won't feel any slack and he'll run with it. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to this pole, which is already kind of set up. Hopefully you can see the tip. I'm gonna zoom in to the tip. What you wanna do when you're using a circle hook is not be excited. Your line will be loose like that. Use the camera moving them moving around what will happen is a catfish will take off with the bait and your line will start to tighten up slowly if it's a big catfish it'll tighten up fast and what will happen and what you need to wait on is what we call the load up the tip of the rod if it goes like this let me back this off a little bit if it just goes like that if you can see the tip of the rod that's not a load up. Do not grab your rod. Do not panic. Just wait. He's just nibbling. He's not taking off with your bait. Okay? Just wait on him. When he does this. Sorry about that. When your rod goes like that. And it's been over. At that time your rod is in full load up. Do not run. Do not grab your rod and snatch it out of the rod holder. When you get to your rod, take one or two good cranks on your reel. That will set the hook for you. At that time is when you will take your rod out of the holder. And if you can see on a push, it's already locked in. I don't know if you can see that, but it's already locked in. Do not have to jerk anymore. Just start Constant pressure on the reel in. That's pretty simple. I do it. 